the entire world comprises of massive amounts of coastlines. And in those areas, these macroalgae are dominated primary production, meaning they're the ones that are primarily fixing carbon. Up to like 50% of the primary production is from macroalgae. Bye. Bring them back and then we can see where we are. Totally. I'm Lizzie Wilbanks. I'm an assistant professor at the University of California, Santa Barbara. Um, and we are out here today at Mohawk Reef. Uh, this is a kelp forest uh, just up from the Santa Barbara Harbor. Um, and we are looking at the kelp microbiome. So we're sampling those slimy layer uh, between the kelp algae and the water, trying to see what's growing in there and how that influences the kelp's health. My name is Yuvin Rout. Uh, I'm a fourth year PhD student at the University of Southern California, and currently we're at the Wrigley Marine Science Center on Santa Catalina Island. In the Santa Barbara Channel with the kelp forest is looking at how the bacteria that are a part of that biofilm layer, um, that slime layer on the surface of the kelp, how that influences the health of the algae and then how that also changes the nutrient cycling um, that the kelp uh, performs in this environment. So how much carbon comes off of them, um, nitrogen flux, those sorts of things, thinking about how it moderates its environment. Okay, so this is healthy. Front one, that's epibiont from station two. Like you mentioned epibionts earlier, right? The microbes associated with different seaweed can also release chemical compounds that deters things from colonizing them so it can help them continue living a healthy and productive lifestyle. But they only occupy like 5% of the space that exists in the coastal areas. So even though they're a very small member, they're making a huge impact. When I go collecting, I go one cove over or I go farther out into the reef. But whenever I'm, I'm studying living macroalgae or microbes associated with living macroalgae, it's usually beneficial for me to collect it freshly attached to some sort of substrate because I can ensure that it's actively growing or whatnot. So my field work entails me going out into the ocean, mostly coastal ecosystems, and then free diving to go down to depth and collect macroalgae that are usually bound to some sort of substrate. But everything about it just captivated me, like the idea of diving down to depth and swimming with the fish or dolphins or, you know, bat rays, whatever is down there. And I also just love that it's natural. It's just basically, you're, the limit is within yourself, how deep you can go, how, how long you can stay under. And then it became a really great skill set and an asset to have to do the research that I do. These are the days that are, uh, you know, sort of the picture book reasons that we joined this career. 